Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are premiering. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me there. So a massive shout out to Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Hyvel, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rakia Gafford, Dave Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Jeronism, Kirsten Smith, Life is Short, Matt, Nyby, Qatar Craig, Reinhardt, Rene, Sally Ballis, Sam Hine, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, and the Flat Earth Channel.com, Tina Baker, and Tom Hawkins. Massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now, uh, we do have a couple of people in Google. I'll say hello to Flatsoid in just a moment, but I've started the show coincidentally just as a couple of guests did join the discord and g plus servers but i wanted to do a couple of shout outs to a few youtubers why not i may as well take this opportunity to do exactly what i choose as it's my show why not so first and foremost i want to shout out the sort of debate regulars who run shows regularly which is to say arwin who's recording or broadcasting live as i record this over on arwijn channel arwin and that's the flat earth early bird which goes out prior to the Flat Earth Debate live on the weekdays and indeed at the weekend. So very hard working man that he is, typically producing quite a lot of content. So Arwin, and then next up we've got Sleeping Warrior, who again seems to sporadically broadcast and produce videos. So Sleeping Warrior channel, Ranty Flat Earth channel. So I'll shout out all of the sort of main contributors. Quantum Eraser also puts on shows every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So those are the sort of headline acts of this channel and the main protagonists, if you will. However, there's a couple of others who, one of which I've shouted out prior to this, which is Martin Lietke, L-I-E-D-T-K-E, Martin Lietke, otherwise known as Flat Earth British. So check out Martin Lietke's channel. He recently ran into a few woes. I did promote him and, and do a few um, shout outs to him about a month ago, um, but he's now reasonably established with a couple of thousand subscribers unlike jlb or john lebon who i like a lot and enjoy his content don't necessarily always agree with him as is the case with most people who watch jlb but he's extremely skeptical of most things and his videos are extremely insightful again he had his channel removed um, on account of the fact i think he mentioned he mentioned something about a school shooting which he shouldn't have done and therefore lost his channel which is very unfortunate although he wasn't at all bitter about it on his return so he's reproducing some of his old material along with new material which he's shouting out um, and he's got a website which is jlb i think it's johnlebon.com um, but yeah go and check that out as well he is uh, predominantly funded by the people who actually subscribe to his channel um, so yeah check out johnlebon.com and again if you're watching this on nathan oakley premiering stream i will put a link to arwin ranty flat earth quantum eraser sleeping warrior martin leaker and john lebon so you can have links to all of those channels if i remember i'll stick them in the info box as well i think it's probably about time i raise the mic on some of the people who've been hanging around while I plug my mates. <laughs> Not that JLB is one of my mates, I just like him as a YouTuber, but certainly the uh, main protagonist I mentioned are definitely friends of mine in every respect. So hello, first and foremost, Flatsoid, how are you doing? Hello, hello. I think you forgot Adam Meekin. Adam Meekin, yeah, of course. So I'll, I was only just arranging stuff with him for his scheduling as well, damn. So he also, Iron Realm Media, I-R-M or Iron Realm Media typically have their have no sphere show 
on a Friday and we're scheduling together so that we're not stepping on each, other, each other's toes, hopefully, or stepping on each other's toes less and less as time goes on. Um, but yeah, he has a, a show on Friday night at 10.30 UK time. So be here or be sphere for the Have No Sphere show on Iron Realm Media. And uh, it's not just Iron, it's not just Adam, there's obviously, uh, there's Walt as well that does it and Zach obviously turns up as well. There's, there's a whole bunch of people that do that particular channel and there's obviously guests that turn up uh, as well. So yeah, really good, well rehearsed, well rehearsed, well planned show. Uh, they have a, a meeting prior to all of their shows, unlike me, <laughs> who just starts. <laughs> so yeah, uh, an actual laid out proper show is Iron Round Media. And I believe he's been helping, uh, he has definitely helped Quantum Eraser already, who I've mentioned, but Arwin has just had a, an overhaul courtesy of Adam Meakin of Iron Realm Media. So hopefully his channel will be looking a bit more shiny. Hey, Dances with Wolves and Highlander. Very good to have you both. Hello. Hello. Sir Nathan of Oakley. Greetings. Greetings. Hello. So subscribe today to all of those channels. As I say, I will, if I remember, put links in the info box, but I'll definitely spam links to their channels if I'm watching this later on this evening with you, the audience. About 15 minutes before we go live, if you want to get coffees and things. Very little pressure on a weekday to actually chit-chat. The second channel audience tends to be that much more forgiving about a bit of dead air during the pre-show. Whereas when it goes out, when I do the, the pre-show and after show on a Thursday or Friday, I know that the recorded show is going to go out on the main channel over the weekend and I'm really keen to keep the conversation going. Whereas at the moment I'm like, yeah, get yourself a coffee. Don't worry about dead air. I'll be in the chat anyway, <laughs> keeping them amused. Them being you, the audience, most importantly, of course. Yeah, keep unmuted. You want to hear that coffee grinder? <laughs> I've sorted that already. I've, I've changed my routine a little bit. So I end up getting everything together and then leaving everything set up to go and make coffee, whereas now I do it beforehand. So, hey, Quantum Eraser. First. I was just plugging your hey, show. John. You were plugging me. <laughs> I was. I was plugging. Well, not plugging you personally, plugging your show. <laughs> oh, really? Well, yeah. thank you. Pleasure. Do I need to go get my warrior bottles? Oh, please don't. <laughs> There's a word in the last show, Quantum Eraser, that you used, and it was a word that when it first came up, I admitted that I couldn't remember, I, did, I didn't know the meaning of the word, and then when I looked it up, but then you used it again for my feeling uncomfortable discussing D-I-T-R-H, because he's a mate. Oh, yeah, recuse. Rec recused. Okay, I've forgotten what it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, they use the term, like, when... Uh... Uh, judges have a conflict of interest they have they have a bias towards any result or they have a relationship with with somebody in the trial then they use the word recuse to uh remove themselves from the situation i see because they're biased yeah yeah so for the sake of argument the the judge is judging over a case in which one of the members of the golf club he's part of is actually on trial and he goes, well, yes. this is a conflict of interest. I'm going to recuse, rec recuse myself of this obligation. Yes. I see. Exactly. I yeah. did look it up at the time. I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. Yes, it's legally related from memory. Well, yes, was, but then that, I, you know, I have the capacity to take that concept uh, and stretch it out. No, I, I totally get that. The example was contextualized around law but it doesn't mean that it's not colloquially useful in this instance it's correct it's exactly it, yeah exactly it's it's the same concept yep how about hypostatization hypostatization not bad <laughs> the hard one <laughs> it's good man uh, we all have those uh words right 
Well, just for anyone watching, hypothesization is the fallacy of misplaced concreteness, otherwise known as a reification fallacy. Making yep. something that is not real or not concrete into something that is real. So taking the abstract, for example, the bending of conceptual mediums, and then applying mm. them to an actual force that you would assert is real, that's a reification fallacy, otherwise known as hypothesization, the fallacy of misplaced control concretedness not even a difficult word that is a difficult word to say uh, the one for the ballers by far there's not even one close is spectroscopy spectroscopy <laughs> you should listen to these clouds try and say this word i got a whole list of what they just and ironically somebody was listening to toady yesterday <laughs> and he bumbled it up it was hilarious man but yeah 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 there, there's their huckleberry spectroscopy i've never had a spectroscopy go on go on oh, dancers. No, no you go ahead spectroscopy is that the study of rainbows sort of no, no i'm talking about it just is, saying is it, the word the, the study of rainbows let me type it on no, chat no, no, no. It's not the study of rainbows. No. Spectroscopy is the study of light and its interaction with matter. Ba essentially, uh, you can get a little bit more in depth, but basically that's what it is. Yeah, there's two, two fields. What do you call them that? Terrestrial, terrestrial and celestial spectroscopy. Yeah, they, <laughs> they get... They don't even know what spectroscopy is. Number one, they just use the word. Um, but yeah, there's there's a mammoth abyss, flaming abyss difference between between the two. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 so stupid. I can't believe it that I would even have to bring it up. But yeah, I'm gonna bring it up. It's gonna be good, man. Wait, wait. I haven't put it all together yet. I'm just brainstorming uh, at this point. But in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll hook it up. The plug for your show won't be relevant, so I'll have to do it again on the live show. You specifically, just because you've got a show tonight. Yeah, it's. I'm gonna do the natural experiments and nature, it, because the last show we had some technical difficulties with it, and I want to do it again anyway because I think it's a good subject. It's natural experiments, observational and field studies, and what is natural. And then we're going to take a little shot at the astronomer Cosray knucklehead, um, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to toe tag him officially. I got, you know what? I got a couple questions besides that. Before you drop today, I got a couple quick questions for you. Uh, no shop question. No worries. I don't want to ruin, you know. No, no, it's fine. We haven't even started yet. So, so. yeah, yeah. With shop questions. No, no problem. Hey, you. Uh, what you? What are you doing this afternoon? Are you going to be there again? Got quite a lot of work to do. The, the website's changed its host in the last couple of weeks, and I actually arranged with William to sort it out on. I think it was Saturday or Sunday, but one of my kids was screaming and teething, and I just couldn't. I couldn't do it, unfortunately. I, you know, you feel really bad when you actually arrange to do something with someone and then let them down. But there we go. Oh, so, right. So I had intended to see if I can get hold of him. I haven't arranged it with him yet. So if I can get hold of him, my webmaster for anyone listening, um, I'll get hold of him and hopefully learn or relearn how to actually continue uploading the videos to the website. Because I've I've stopped at like, I think I stopped at 9.50 when the website oh, changed you host. got a few to upload, huh? <laughs> yeah, I just don't know how to do it anymore because it's a new host. Right. What What number are we on now? A nine eight nine, I believe. Nine eighty nine? Hmm. Interesting. Anything special for the thousandth one? I haven't got anything planned particularly special. It's just a number, right? I'm just pleased that we're here. And uh, although it's not around the thousand, it's now, ten shows prior or a week and a half prior. The around the thousandth show time, there's people in the comments making it clear that they're demolishing fundies fundies being religious globe worshipping zealots in this example with the arguments that they hear here hear here <laughs> it, 
it works. That works for me. You know, that's that's good. So just being here discussing these subjects, that's that's good enough for me. I'm very happy doing the show, and I don't I don't see the need to make make any drastic alterations. I had considered making maybe a minor change and having uh, a one on one in the middle of the show, which I step back from. On the other hand, I, th- I had a thought, think about it. It's like, well, that does happen naturally, and trying to force it to happen isn't necessarily going to mean it will. So why bother yes. having a dedicated section to it? You know. But in the same vein, I thought, well, from going forward, if there are debates that sort of s- start up, I will take more of a back seat. And I've said that a couple of times before, and I have done it a couple of times before. But it depends where you are in the in the debate, right? If you if you're on a winner, then you're like, yeah, okay, I'll step back at this point a bit more. If you're fighting for Coriolis, then, you know, I say fighting for Coriolis, and I mean that for anyone who's like, fighting for Coriolis, yeah, Coriolis is real, there just isn't any on Earth. Just in case anyone's wondering why I'm fighting for Coriolis, because the irony of ironies is that the globeheads who come here fight against it. But my point being that when the, when those sorts of circumstances befall us, I'm not interested in taking a step back. I want everyone to understand <laughs> the argument. Well, no one can articulate it better than you sitting here for a yeah, thousand shows it. anybody could if they'd sat here for a thousand shows <laughs> yeah and i like the layout and at the moment you've got good control of the show so i wouldn't really change anything no i uh, mean neither I'm, I'm quite happy with it so yeah a thousand show will come around and it'll be like yeah hey thousand shows isn't that amazing because it is but i won't do anything different it'll just be fire up the thousand show and say great isn't it good we've got this far it has no, been I wasn't of... saying anything different. I was saying, you know, pomp and circumstance and such. Yeah, not really. No, I haven't got any pomp and circumstance planned for the thousandth show. If that's if that is your question, yes. No, I haven't got anything planned. We'll just make you a meme with the party hat on or something. <laughs> just pride more than anything else. Because there's been many a, an, an instance where, for, by whatever means, people have tried to stop the show being in existence in various different ways. And there was a period where they succeeded. And it was a struggle to get the show back on the road, given that I had about 19 copyright strikes. <laughs> you know, I'm not even joking. So there's been periods where it's been very, very difficult to keep the show running at all. But I've managed it, and that's, you know, I'm very proud of that. Yeah, I think give credit where it's due. You're working really hard on the channel, and you deserve it. Well, it's because of that that I thought I sort of had a bit of empathy for the people who've been a bit screwed over recently. So I did a shout out to all the regulars. So you, Ranty, Arwin, Sleeping Warrior, Adam Meekin, but also, close your ears, Quantum Eraser, John Le Bon and Ad, uh, Martin Leaker, Flat Earth British. And both of them have had their channels taken away from them for different reasons. Uh, Martin had his swindled out of him by a con man. He essentially asked for his password with a little bit of social engineering and weaseled Martin into giving it him subsequently losing him a channel with almost what 20,000 plus subscribers a lot of subscribers I think it was nearly 30,000 people on that channel but that's now in the hands of someone else uploading a load of jap crap so that's what's going on on that channel and JLB just had his wiped out just went completely now a lot of people Why? covered all he said on his recent video was that he covered a school shooting he knew he shouldn't but he did it anyway those were his pretty much exact words certain hoaxes that you're just not allowed to cover and if you do they'll take your channel off you wow that's some extreme censorship uh youtube isn't that an american-based company yeah google (laughs) (laughs) um we i don't i don't play censorship but you don't talk you don't talk speculative you know i can't i can't think of the term off the top of my head you're not you're not doing what JLB does. Quite the, quite the contrary yeah. you're talking about. Not that John doesn't talk about things that are empirical. You know, he's, he's, he's more talking about the history hoax and searching out primary source uh, information rather than uh, actual... You know, he looks at scientific studies and he'll skirt around the facts that we skirt around when we're being empirical in our descriptions of why they don't or do mean what they say when it comes to, in quotes, air quotes, science. So, you know, JLB is covering a lot of a lot of subjects, but I like his level of scepticism. You know, he's very, very sceptical about everything. And I like that. So I think he's definitely worthy of promoting. 
especially as he's now got 400 oh. subs and he had about seven or 8,000. Yeah, yeah but it's still, it's still censorship, though. That's the problem I have with it. I mean, I, I understand the, the subject matter is a bit sensitive, but it's still, when it gets down to it, it's still censorship, right? Absolutely. I, 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 don't, I don't entertain that. I don't suffer it at all. It's censorship, right. but it's, it's like I almost don't blame Google on account of the fact that it's mate, this almost saying when you read the guidelines, don't mess with mainstream narratives as they're being conjured. Leave them alone. Yeah, that's horse, that's horse shit. Sorry. No, nah, that's kind of what they're saying, though. You know, mainstream narratives of the time, you're not allowed to mess with them. If you do, we'll shut you down. Yeah, well, I was in the military, like I said, for 20 years. That's one of the things I, I stood for. That's one of the things I, I, you know, stood against. Right? So I don't appreciate it at all. In fact, it pisses me off. Now, depending on the subject matter, I mean, there's a limit that you can go to. I understand that. I'm not a friggin' you know, mouth breathing knuckle dragger, but you know, mainstream topics, those are fair game. Period. End yeah. of story. It just seems like the, the the news can discuss them, detail what they want to detail about them in their way, and we're not. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate and Cut No Live. <laughs> I'm your host Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, how dare you? Then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date. With the flat earth debate now we are joined by flat soid quantum eraser and i think that's pretty much it in g plus very good to have you both hey hey tenth is here oh hey tenth you can, your icon's never ever visible right at the beginning good afternoon hello hello good morning and hello to everyone in discord hopefully i've got some of you at least off mute off moot off mute <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're all off mute now. Hello, Discord server. Any signs of Earth curvature? Not from Rhode Island. Still flat South Africa. Each each time you say that, tenth is in a different spot. I know. <laughs> He's all <laughs> over the world, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> About axial rotation of the Earth based variety. No, Earth-based Coriolis. Where? In Albuquerque? <laughs> about scientific <laughs> evidence of gravity? Any of that floating about? No, gravity oh. the, the gravity's just a made-up term. Yeah, it's it just a concept. No, it's not even a concept. It's just some made-up word. Part of it's true, though. Oh, pray tell. Imagine a time. It's falling apart. Imagine a time when if we could actually <laughs> yeah. manipulate it, though. Manipulate time? Manipulate Ooh, we got what? Doc Brown on the panel. 1.21 gigawatts. No, gigawatts. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and, that was a mis- that was kind of, mispronunciation that was given to the producer that just got passed down to the cast. We got a re- we got a reverse Timmy clown fallacy. <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? No, it's a light in the sky. Not in Zimbabwe. <laughs> You're telling me there's no sun in Zimbabwe? <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that's not the case. <laughs> Hey, Arwin. Yeah, we covered the um, radio astronomy stuff allegedly with the distance. So I guess the next part is the uh, spectroscopy, which uh, QE said he's going to cover. With regards to the sun. Oh, sure. Yeah, this. Uh, I don't know what this well, coming to it. Well, yeah, you have radio spectroscopy, but that we're not going to deal with that. We're gonna we're gonna just go with the sun. So. Yeah, I looked up black body. I won't. I won't give the oh. game away. You looked up black body radiation. Yeah, because you wouldn't tell me what it was yesterday, so I thought I sod it. I'll look it up. Did I refuse to tell you what it was? No, it's part of your presentation. You said there's nothing to see here. Moving on. Moving on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna run across Kirchhoff's law, right? You run across that. Uh, I think it was mentioned. I didn't actually click on that particular link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a train wreck. You the, for, the formula debunks itself, <laughs> which is so funny. I don't know if I'm going to get deep into that. It looked like I was just going to do a general presentation, but that never, that never works out, man. just doesn't work out. You know, so I thought about it yesterday. I said, no, I'm probably going to have to start from the beginning. I'm not going to do the history and stuff like that. It just takes too long. So I'm going to try to keep it streamlined, but it's difficult. I want, I want to segue into Maxwell's demon. So any evidence of gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? No, still waiting for demonstration otherwise, though. Nope. Any comments in Discord server before we get into Maxwell's demon? No? Is that a no, Darren? Uh, yes, I'll be a no. So, yesterday, Paul had a visual representation of a chamber with a pump and a heat slash ice cooling source underneath it. Lid on top, and the lid blew off. And I don't know if it was relevant that the lid had blown off when you, when you said what you said, but you said, no, no, no. <laughs> this isn't entropy increase. That's Maxwell's demon. No, I was just making a joke. <laughs> yeah, I realise, but I, I didn't. I, that's why I didn't highlight it at the time when it was just a gag. But there may be people out there that have no idea what Maxwell's demon is. This, this, would you call it a thought experiment? Yes. So, can you tell us what Maxwell's demon is, please? I wasn't prepared for this. Doesn't he have Early a silver hammer? Oh, oh, there's a gag come in. I knew it. I knew as soon as I asked him to start detailing it, a gag would come from somewhere. Go on, Tenth Man. Get it all out. What? Sorry? <laughs> I said, doesn't he have a silver hammer? A silver hemi? Yeah. It's an old Beatles song. Uh, okay. A bit before my time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell, in brief, it was a f- quite feeble and absurd attempt to disprove the second law of thermodynamics. It's really stupid. Um, the second law of therm- it, just simply, the second law of thermodynamics is a natural law. As soon as you invoke any intelligence anywhere near it, then it train wrecks your whole appeal. <laughs> so, I mean, Maxwell's demon, you have an intelligent agent opening and closing friggin' sides of the box, allowing certain particles through and, and other particles not, basically, essentially. Uh, so, like I said, as soon as you invoke intelligence into a natural law, it's it, it's it's nonsensical. I don't even know how it even got airtime. So, it's a train wreck. Stupid.
Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No. No, no. Just 12 kilometers. Not in Greenbow, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Tunisia. <laughs> What about the R value itself? Earth radius. Presupposed. The R have been in here. Oh, not in Saskatchewan. <laughs> Would that be a radius of a sphere or a radius of a disc or something else? Yeah, I, int I intentionally leave that out so that not you, but a fundy can kind of detail how they acquire the flat circle and then presuppose it's spherical oh, okay, by way okay. of radius oh, okay, well, gotcha. would a spatial loop also count as a radius what the hell is a spatial loop <laughs> remember like they conceptualize wormholes the the piece of paper putting the pencil in right like the matrix train tunnel or a 2d I side know. scroller on a nintendo you go out one side and come in the other You could consider that as a radius if you go with the imagining of the direct connection being a circle. So, bottom line, it's all just assumption. Sorry, I'm making things needlessly complicated. That's okay, Arwen. That concludes the housekeeping. So, I'll get it in early. Be here or be sphere on the Quantum Eraser YouTube channel. 8 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. You want to tell us what you're covering, Kiwi? Yes, we're going to go back over natural uh, experiments along with field studies and observational studies. I did this presentation uh, a few weeks ago, but I had some technical difficulties with the computer, and it seems that I've solved that issue. So we're going to go back over that, uh, drop anchor around uh, what is natural, what does natural mean, and toad tag uh chat troll astronomer charlie causeray be there b sphere be here or b sphere on the quantum erase channel 8 p.m uk 2 p.m central standard that's tonight tuesday the 15th yeah 15th so you got you got your plug in the out in the pre-show are we me? I was actually watching you today for a change. <sighs> yeah, well, it's always good to watch my show, of course. The Flat Earth Early Bird Show, 2 p.m. Amsterdam time every day. What is that? Between 6 and 10 U.S. time. Very early. And midnight uh, in Australia and New Zealand. So, every day, come and watch it on my channel, Arwin A R. Uh, R W I J N. Be here or be sphere. So please share the show, which is precisely why I've gone quiet, because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Hmm. Now. So has the Discord server just filled up with people that aren't chatting? Guys. Hey, Chocolate. Sorry, I didn't see you there. It's all good. Hey, What's up? Uh... Trolling us on the last couple of uh, videos. Coincidentally, Chocolate, when it's been appropriate to do so. So, I think it was when we were talking about Jupiter. You, your interruptions consisted of, when do we do calculations? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I heard that yesterday. I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> that was a silly move. I want to perfect. calculate. <laughs> perfect, absolutely perfect. You've also got Anthony, who's decided to slip into character just at the right moment. So at the beginning, not at a crucial moment, but at the beginning of one of Quantum Erasers' explanations for why natural experiments aren't experiments, destroying Anthony's claim to be point, and. He starts rumpusing him, and I'm like, no rumpusing, please, Anthony. Because, you know, I just thought he was, as is often the case, just a bit too much into character. 
You know, he knows his character's position's being shattered, so he's got a rumpus in character, right? But he wasn't. He didn't intentionally done it to point out that that's where it typically would happen if you're dealing with the fundy. So it's like this nice little neat package of the claim that Jupiter is a gas giant in a vacuum being debunked by way of gas law. And you've got the assertions that you've got a physical interaction between these bodies that have been observed. I don't know how many years it was by Paul. He's not here at the moment, but he actually observed this. Um, and those assertions being put through the scientific method, obviously failing to get past the first me first step. So all of that was like packaged up nicely to say, look, their, their claim of a sky vacuum with a gas giant having things physically interact and leave scars in weather patterns is complete nonsense. Here's how it gets demolished, along with a hint at what the fundies do when they come to obfuscate these dem de demolitions of their claims. So it was a nice little package, but that was the show. Like I said, this I think it was called something like Space Planet Jupiter Debunked by Science. And in between that, you've got chocolate going, where do I calculate? Where's the maths? <laughs> Just perfect. We need the math. <laughs> yep. And the other one was Timmy Clown. So Jose J.G. Gonzalez has come into the show, started recording without telling anybody, and then later played it on his show, making it seem like he's arranged a, a debate with me, which he hadn't, uh, which he then played on his show with my Hangout link playing to his audience. So Timmy has obviously seen this and just can't resist writing it down by hand and joining the show. So that's what he's done. Not that he couldn't just join by Discord. He could have done that anyway, but, you know, fair enough, whatever. So he joins the panel, which is great, because obviously we start taking apart some of his old assertions, some of his old observations. Just fantastic um, to have people like Timmy return to, just to get absolutely demolished, especially as Coriolis effect comes up. He starts asserting that the Earth's rotating underneath his magnum. <laughs> Right. Yeah, with his Coriolis app on his phone. <laughs> right. Great app stuff. That. Been a good, good few days. Oh, and Zanuck, lest I forget, Zanuck debunking space altogether with gas law. PVNRT. What's the gas law? I'll kick you out. PVNRT. What's V? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, man. It's been a good few, good few shows. Yeah, and then he said the gas was the volume, and you said, no, it's the container. He goes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because presumably, you know, he's not to lie too much, because he'll look really stupid. Oh, it's way too late for that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, somebody's trying to talk, and I've got him on mute. Sorry, uh... Practice tactic. Is that right? Tiny lettering. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good to have you. Hey, how's it going? Um, so you guys can hear me right now? Yeah, yeah coming through loud and clear. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, I, I tried to get on here to speak to you guys. Like, uh, I think it was like last week or something. But I think that the Discord. It wasn't available for, I guess, like people that's not on the panel or people that try to talk. I, I guess it's like a, a defense mechanism that you guys have to make sure that you can eliminate trolls and stuff like that, <laughs> which it's is understandable. But no, no, it's um, probably just full. So it can fit. It can, you can join until it's full. Basically, anybody can join. Ah, OK, OK. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get on here to. Uh, uh, I know this is like a flatter uh, debate or whatever, and I wanted to find out more about it because, um, you know, I have people on my job and stuff pretty much telling me about this. And at first I thought it was preposterous. And I'm like, how can you have people that believe the earth is flat? And uh, one of the things that this one guy on my job, he brought up, he was talking about gravity and how it doesn't exist. And I, and I told him, I said, yo, bro, just walk off of a cliff and <laughs> you will definitely know that it exists because you will fall down and you will hit the ground and you know you will die 
and he proceeded to tell me something about uh like density or something like that but it, it sounded weird to me but i just wanted to see if i could get an explanation on on you know what you guys say about it because he referred me to you guys to say you guys are like the experts or something sure who, who wants to take this nobody <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll take it if riley's not there yeah you're perfect go ahead Ali. all right okay so yes uh have you heard anything about relative density before before your yeah that la that time or you don't know anything about it no uh well i know what density is like uh correct me if i'm wrong but when like from my knowledge density is basically how heavy an object is or something is that pretty much what that is uh, almost so like, for instance, almost okay right uh, so what density it. <laughs> i'll, I'll, I'll explain crazy. it what the density of material is is its volumetric mass it's how much weight or mass there is to a specific volume of the material and the ratio between the volume and the mass is what makes what gives it its density and yeah materials can be changed in their density and this has consequences when that happens so what happens is that if you mix up uh, materials of different densities that are fluid that means they can be gas or a liquid but not a solid object then they will rearrange themselves eventually when left to, to their own device to different density layers because what density materials do is they seek its relative density equilibrium point within the spectrum of all things it is in so that in its medium basically so if hold you on, have hold on, Owen. just 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 see how well he's following along what's your name again I, the text on my discord so small what's your name uh my my actual name is uh brandon but it, on here it's this uh prince tactic that's like my gamer name or whatever but uh yeah, you can just call me Tactic. Tactic, perfect. So, so right. far, the, the most important detail that Arwen got to is equilibrium. Do, do you follow along so far? Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, just to make sure I understand it correctly, um, based off of how he explained it, um, when he says equilib equilibrium, uh, okay, so let's say if I get... Uh, a uh, a rock right and i drop that off of a tall building okay so being that that rock is dense uh, according to what he's saying that would mean that the air around it is less dense and the rock is more dense and that's why it falls exactly. and it reaches equilibrium Correct. Right. Uh, right. It's equilibrium. Perfect. Be the the foundation, the ground, or something. Or? Perfect. So Not far, so almost, oh, hold on, almost. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. Do you want do you want to continue with your explanation? I mean, it, it, there's a bit more, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I wanted to expand a little bit upon the his explanation. He was correct up until the point that he said uh, at the ground it finds its equilibrium. Well, technically, that's not entirely correct because a rock resting on the ground it's a solid object it's not gonna like a fluid spread around the rock is gonna okay. be as it's resting on the ground still surrounded by air and that means it's not at equilibrium with its surrounding and then it's gonna translate that this equilibrium into pressure locally towards where its equilibrium point would be and that's downward oh okay Okay, let me it always right, depends so me on the, this, this, the hold material. Hold on, Owen. Owen he's the got a question. object is in. Uh, is hold on, just one second. That? Hold on, Owen. What was your, your question tactic? Go ahead. Okay, so, all right, so this is my question. What if we uh, put water into play? How does that equilibrium work with that? Like, uh, okay, so if I throw a rock in the ocean or a lake or whatever, just uh, any body of water,
Okay. That won't sink. How, how does that play into that? It's, I haven't really put much thought into it. <laughs> You that's know, my enough. mind is kind of blown right now. Man. Don't I'm worry about it. That's fine. That's fine. Generally speaking, most people are under the impression that you drop something and it falls because a force has pulled it to the ground. When in reality, yeah, like, uh, when you're on the top of the cliff, yeah. when you're on the top of the cliff, you're in, Aaron hasn't said it yet, but fall arrest. So the ground beneath you is stopping you from going down, but you're not in equilibrium. Likewise, if you pick okay. up a ball and drop it, you've taken it out of equilibrium and then dropped it, but the gravity equation starts from the point that you are in the air holding the ball. So jump off a cliff, well you're already up high, high enough to go down because you're more dense than the air around you. Okay, okay. Likewise, just part. one last point, likewise things go the other direction. So if you have a helium balloon, it'll go up when you let it go, as opposed to go down. Right. Right, right. Right. And right, okay. Yeah, so also, uh, if, if you put helium inside of a balloon, right, it will go up due to the, uh, I know helium is lighter than the air, so is that, that's, is that basically what you're saying is, is that the helium trying to reach its point of equilibrium, the precisely. reason why it's going up? Yes, so, yes. It's, if you just substitute less light with less dense. Oh, man less dense than the air so because the helium is less dense Easy, it's trying bro. to reach equilibrium but equilibrium for the balloon is up because it's less dense right. than the air right. equilibrium and for you is if in fall arrest i at the top of a cliff equilibrium for you is down right 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 yes Yo, yeah, hold on chocolate I hold on one. everyone hold on go ahead Arwin. Hold on, hold on one second. Uh, if, I, if I may expand for a bit, if you are a human being and you have your lungs full with 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 air, and you uh, go and sit on a very salty piece of water or go into it, you're gonna float pretty much to the top of it because combined with the air and the density of your blood and your flesh and your bones, combine it all together, is gonna be just slightly slightly less dense than that very packed salty thick water so that's why you're gonna then yeah go to the top unless you carry a rock with you that is like pretty dense pretty heavy then if you keep hold on to it your combined density with because you now because you're holding it you're basically one single object your combined density is then gonna pull you down beneath the the, the thick water anyway Facts, so that's, facts. That that's that's understandable. Okay, I, I get it. Okay, um, you know it's just kind of it's messing me up a little bit. So like this, so basically, according to you guys, you're telling me that this whole gravity thing, right? Um, according to my knowledge and what I was taught, um, you know, gravity is a pulling force that uh, is originated from the center of the Earth and it's holding us in, basically just keeping us from being flung off of the spinning Earth. That's my, you know, uh, simplified, summoning, summed up version of what I Fair think enough. No. is. So you okay. guys are saying that that doesn't exist, right? No, that will now just, I'm taking off my flat earth cap and putting on my globe head. Can you pop yourself on mute tactic? It's just causing a bit of feedback. So with my globe head hat on to explain their rhetoric, which you're reciting incorrectly, I would say no, gravity is not a force. So the old gravity, 100 plus years old, has been superseded by new gravity. Old gravity would be what we call Cavendish slash Reverend John Mitchell gravity. I won't even utter the name that you'll know it by. It's not even important. But the new replacement is Einsteinian gravity. Now Einsteinian gravity is the bending of a conceptual medium known as space-time. Now, that should, if it doesn't already, ring alarm bells because conceptual okay. mediums... Yeah, I, I have heard that before. Sure. Yeah, you, I heard that before. Sorry, yeah, I guess I, I said it wrong. <laughs> no, it's okay. The crucial detail being that the current version of gravity is two things that are important to you. Number one, it's not a force. Number two, it's the bending of a concept... 
Now, if you're unfamiliar with concepts, you can't bend them. They're not physical. Same as you can't bend freedom. It's a concept. But gravity in its current incarnation is a concept being bent, giving rise to a not actual force. That's what gravity is currently. So this pulling to the center, no, that's not what it's, that's not what it is. It's not a force. Okay, got you. Oh, so, man. Um, yeah. I tell you what, bro, like you guys, I, I'm going to have to stay posted to learn a little more about this whole thing because it's kind of blowing my mind right now. <laughs> I right, totally no get it. Cap, I'm not, I be it blew my mind a year ago as well. So, And it's not spinning either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not moving either. Oh, oh by, the, by the way, Nathan, if I may, I'd like to expand just a little about the uh, the relative density theory versus gravity. Just a little. Because there are so many claims about gravity, and I'd like to set them all straight. Or so far, we, you be my guest. All right. So one of the things that uh, ballers claim that prove gravity is an acceleration rate within a vacuum chamber. They say, look, because of this, that means that there is a force being applied externally causing the displacement of the object. According to Newtonian mechanics, there's a force present that is doing that. Well, the relative density theory also explains it, but with better actually provable scientific foundations. Because, yeah, an object that is surrounded by a medium that is like yeah almost nothing in in relation to it it will indeed accelerate and that there's the thing what causes the acceleration if not gravity well relative density disequilibrium causes acceleration it causes a force if an object is not in equilibrium with its surrounding and it can move freely it will if in this equilibrium try to find its equilibrium point through displacement and that displacement will be in the form of an acceleration and that is where the force actually comes into play that's an excellent description your most concise to date excellent very Thank good you. Arwin. facts yeah 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 that makes that makes plenty of sense um so what about okay so what about like tides and stuff um you know from my knowledge when we have waves and tides, that's caused from the... Can I, uh, can I just add from the to what Arwen was telling you? you? You can, but just let him get to the end of his question. Go, go ahead. Um, oh, I'm sorry, tactic. It's loud here. So tides, they're apparently caused by the moon pulling them, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Gravity's not a force. It's not pulling anything. Right. And, and if it if it were, is the moon an object to be pulling onto the water in the first place? So many questions. The, the, Indeed. The, just to... Well, there's no... So the most important thing is that's a cause and effect question, and cause and effect questions are adjudicated by the scientific method via experiment. Right. Uh, do, you, do you have an experiment that validates that the moon is causing the tides? Yeah, the claim. Uh, exactly. Hold on, Owen. You might not understand the relevance uh, of that question, but do I have an experiment? No, I don't. I actually yeah, and don't, neither man. do they. Oh. And the neither point. do they. Yeah. <laughs> that's the point. That's the main point, tactic. So they don't have any experimental validity being offered to this assertion that the moon is somehow pulling the tides along. I can't give you an explanation for the cause of the tides, but their explanation falls outside of scientific validity. That's the point. I had a theory for it, though. Gotcha. Oh, okay. here we go. Someone's got a theory. <laughs> Is this a <laughs> Mystic Meg theory? Oh, he's got a theory. Post the experiment. Hold on. Let's get it clear. Is this a Mystic Meg theory or a scientific theory? More of a thought theory. <laughs> <laughs> Mystic Meg. Go ahead, jo uh, Flatsoid. Chocolate, I know you're waiting. My bad. Now, I was speaking to Owen the other day, saying... Don't you think our water currents and things would actually cause tides? Maybe. Tides, you say? Well, this you is mean the, what this causes is, the tides? This is some beautiful speculation. Did you have something more relevant, Chocolate? 
No, what the only thing I was going to tell the guy is that th- this story about gravity that they give us, right? This uh, force, one one day it's a force, and then the next day it's the bending of a concept. The the only reason they're giving us this story is so that they have a a, a reason to tell us what's going on in the sky, right? They tell you that the same force, the same things that are causing your pen to fall to the floor are the same reasons why things are orbiting around in, in, in the sky above you, right? It's just nonsense so that you can relate what's going on here to what's going on up there, right? But like it has been said, there, they have no scientific evidence for any of this. That's really the point. So yeah, that's, what, that's what I don't understand, really, is that if they really wanted to show cause and effect, wouldn't they try and create like some really dense, uh, I don't know, like a sphere or ball or a block of, you know, super dense material, you know, with all the technology they have and do experiments with that to show it bending space time or pulling water or something like that? Well, trust me, they've tried. Guess why you don't see anything about that, though? Because it didn't work. Well, they don't... it all failed, they didn't get... <laughs> well, let's just yeah, start it. If, if they're talking about the bending of a concept as the medium that this is going to take place in, where's the experiment? <laughs> let's just use their vernacular loosely as they do. Where's this experiment going to take place exactly? If it's the bending of a conceptual medium that's giving you the non-force force that you can think of as a force but isn't actually a force called gravity, what's the where are we going to do this if the medium is space-time? I don't know, some particle gravitational collider thingy that also causes mini tides in a reactor with neutrinos. I don't know what they'll come up with. That's not space-time, is it? <laughs> Yo, hold on. Wait, you got to say... That's not space time. Yeah, you said a uh, uh, non-force force. What? Yes, that's <laughs> correct. That? That's correct. Yeah, say yes. it again, Nathan. Say it again. The non-force, a force that you can think of as a force, but is not actually a force called gravity, given rise to by the bending of a conceptual medium known as space time. Now, given that the conceptual medium of space-time is where we'd need to get this scientific validity from where location where are we going to be doing this given that space-time is conceptual uh, i'm thinking maybe narnia would be a good choice to do it in should we do it in narnia equally valid <laughs> as space-time yeah, space-time isn't a place we can do anything in. So how are we going to lend validity to anything that's taking place in a conceptual medium? Answer, we won't. Gravity's a farce. Hey, ask the new gentleman. Also, let's just destroy the entire heliocentric spinning ball space monkey religion right at its core, right? How do you have gas pressure without a container? According to my knowledge, that's that's not possible. Um. So, what, like, what is that referring to? Well, the no, thing no. is, is that they tell you when you go outside and you look up that you're surrounded by a vacuum, right? But you just answered yeah, the question. Was... You can't have gas pressure without a container. You also can't have a vacuum without a container. They tell you, you go outside and it's the complete opposite. It's a violation of natural law. Uh, so you, so you're referring to like, basically you're referring to our atmosphere being right next to the vacuum itself, which is known as outer space. Exactly. That actually yeah. And they claim possibly. that gravity keeps it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause, uh, According to what gravity is, you're right. Gravity is, is supposed to be keeping us plus the atmosphere and everything intact with the uh, the earth itself, the ball. Um, right. that, that's and like you just said, it's a concept. 
No, no, right. we just covered that. That's a big problem. Oh, well done, you know. well done. It's okay. It, it, I appreciate that you're, you're new here, so we're being particularly gentle with you. No, it's it's not supposed to be holding the atmosphere on. That's not part of gas law. That's not what gas does. And also, gravity is not a force. So it's not holding gas on. It's just a violation of a natural law known as the second law of thermodynamics. So in terms of, we covered this a couple of days ago, gas law, it requires a volume for the gas to be in to calculate it. Well, that okay. volume, in the case of the sphere world in a vacuum known as outer space, the volume would be all of space. But the gas, according to the religion of a sphere world, is just magically sticking to the side of a ball, not because of gravity, because gravity doesn't do that. It just is doing that. Just violating a natural law, as you do. Even if gravity <laughs> did exist, it would have no effect on entropy or gas pressure. Right. According to their own uh, presupposed calculations about gravity, about all the forces out there, gravity is supposed to be a weak force if you're even going to accept that it is an actual force, which would be false. But if you accept that it would be, it's considered a weak force. Well, the expand the, the, the force behind gas pressure expansion within a container is actually considered one of the strongest forces measured. And you can test it for yourself. Just like have a vacuum chamber and open it up, you know, and bang, it's going to displace very powerfully so, sometimes with the shock wave. So how is that presupposed weak force of gravity even going to theoretically keep the gas from expanding with explosive power into outer space? And also remember, never at the same that. time, the, the Earth, the spinning ball Earth, is rotating on its axis at 1,000 miles per hour at the equator while moving around the sun at 66,600 miles per hour. Okay. Chasing yeah. the sun around almost at a what five hundred thousand miles per hour. So all of that is happening in the middle of a vacuum, and this little blue marble in the middle of it is maintaining its atmosphere, and we're all breathing. It's magic, my friends. <laughs> it's just magic. When you think about it, that, that really does sound preposterous to me. One of the things that got me thinking um, was I was thinking about that outer layer, right? Like the the last outer layer. Um, what's stopping that vacuum from just pulling in that outer layer of gas? I don't understand oh. if it's not. Well, that's thinking. usually well, our question <laughs> to the guy who's evening ball. Well done. One or the, the other. Chocolate or Arwin, I don't care who. Sorry. It's just that... Yeah. Uh, Vacuum doesn't pull. It's actually the gas that pushes into the lower pressure zone. You know, we 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 oh, think okay. a vacuum cleaner pulls air in because it yeah it right. creates a lower pressure in relation to the nozzle and that then displaces the air surrounding it into the vacuum cleaner. But a vacuum technically isn't something that does anything. It's always going to be the gas that expands within the lower pressure zone. You want to ask your question again, tactic? Gotcha. Yeah. Um. Basically, th this was the thing that I had problems understanding, and I, I guess you guys uh, explained it to me. So, with when it comes down to our atmosphere, being that it is gas, that outer layer out there, I did wonder how did that outer layer? How how is it possible that it didn't just expand into the vacuum, you know, and then it just suck out? all of our atmosphere and our breathing air. Um, I looked on a podcast. I watched Joe Rogan a lot. And uh, there was an interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And on that interview, Joe Rogan, he asked Neil deGrasse Tyson about gravity. This was probably maybe three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, something like that. And um, on his interview, this so happened to be the second time he interviewed Neil deGrasse Tyson. And the second time he asked about gravity. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, he seemed to be uneasy, and Joe Rogan picked up on it when he was trying to explain it to him. And he said, Yo, you seem to be uneasy about this. Why, why are you getting riled, riled up? 
And I was like looking at it and I was like, man, some, something seems a little bit off. I thought that, you know, it comes down to like astrophysicists or scientists. They're supposed to be happy about questions. And I was wondering, and then his explanation of gravity. on, bro. You know, so you know, that's, that's what I guess that's the main thing that catap catapulted my uh desire to learn more about this you know because it seems to be a lot of holes in it oh that is music to my ears let me get it straight joe rogan has sent you on a path that's made your way to a flat earth debate forum that is epic but your question yeah. specifically was about i can't remember if you, you phrased it slightly differently the second time you said how can it be not expanding into the uh lower pressure system if there's nothing to press on Correct. Right. Since you got, since uh, according, to, what's his name? R. Arin. Yeah. He said that it's pull pulling force. Yeah. So it's I tried to rephrase that and say why why didn't it expand into the vacuum? Oh, it would rapidly. Why doesn't it expand? I know it would. Why? What What this does is it debunks the notion that the sky is a vacuum. Outer space is fake for this reason. Because the gas would fill the space. Space is fake. Sorry to break it to you like this. Yes. And, and so, to so, expand a little, you, no, there hold is on a, a lot of... Oh, hold sorry, on a guys. second. Hold on, wait one. We, they say that it, there is a vacuum surrounding us. Right. We know that it's not. So that's all we have to prove, that it's not. What is it? Um, Who knows? But we definitely know it's not a vacuum. And so say goodbye to the heliocentric You, you don't actually Indeed. know that, John. Indeed. So if I may expand on that now, <laughs> there can be quite a lot of room up there, although not with the astronomical amounts that are being presumed by the heliocentric model. But there can be quite a lot of vast amount of room up there and whatever would be there would be part of the entire pressure gradient of the confine which is what happens for some reason because of relative um, density could, presumably yeah. but it there's not going to be any type could of I vacuum ask? anywhere and there you can, has you to can be interrupt one more time brenda then i'll kick you out how about that interrupt him again brenda and you leave oh god i'd like to ask a question please I'd like you to shut up till Arwen's finished. It seems interesting that we get very seldom fundies come here, yet when we get a nice, amiable chap who's just asking questions about the world he lives in, suddenly Brenda makes an appearance to interrupt Arwen. What a shock. Don't interrupt him again, Brenda. Right. So, again, what is up there way beyond our sight? Because sight has a kind of a range limitation built in. Optics is very complex at it as a side subject it's a side matter but it's kind of mysterious as to how things really work up there we don't know a lot about it there's a point after which uh helium balloons will simply not be able to rise any further and they will keep stuck and then break because people have been sending balloons up to see what is up there to try and see some kind of curvature or the lack thereof but we don't really know what's way beyond that point now, people what within they? NASA might know a little bit more, but yeah, they're just sticking to their own stories. With the, the balloons you were talking about, um, what, what do they get? Like, what, what type of information or data do they get with, from the balloons that they see? Video about? footage, temperature, pressure, that kind of thing. Not oh, curvature. Okay. Curvature yeah, is... Yeah, no curvature. <laughs> well, only because it's a reification of the horizon. So the horizon is not the leading edge of a sphere. When they say, are we looking for curvature? No, they're just looking at the horizon. And the horizon is a not actual location. A bit like gravity is a not actual force. Shout out yeah. to Dave Rakia Gafford. He says, Rakia, life is growing. Wizards, past creator is real. All glory to God. Massive thank you to David Rakia Gafford for hitting the super chat. Really appreciate your support. Go on, Can Brenda. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, have you figured out what a mole is and what mass is? No, unfortunately not. No, you don't know what. A
No, what's mass? Have you figured it out, Brenda? Mass is the resistance. Yes, I have. So mass is a resistance. It's it's inertia. It's the resistance to acceleration, right? And a mole is the number of atoms equip in a, an equivalent substance to twelve grams of. Sound like you don't know what you're talking about. You said mass is inertia. What I mean, happened there? Yes, no, no, I asked you what inertia. mass was, and you've just detailed what a mole is and what inertia is. So mm. what's mass? Yeah, a mass. Mass is the resistance to acceleration. That's inertia. You just told me that was inertia. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's not a mass then. That's inertia then. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 nearly equivalent. Not Excuse me, nearly oh, equivalent. Inertia, then. Nearly equivalent. I asked you what mass was. You've described inertia and detailed what that is. Then detailed what a mole is. Then said that they're nearly equivalent. Nearly equi What the hell does nearly equivalent mean? What's mass? No, I didn't say a mole and mass are... Sorry, what's mass? The amount of substance in a material. That's a mole. No. Yes, that <laughs> is a mole. Didn't you come here asserting that I didn't know what mole was? When you said you don't know what mole and mass is. No, I don't know what mass is. I know what a mole is. That's a mole. No, no, a mole is a number. It's the equivalent number to the same number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon. For, carbon and that's carbon. even wrong. Yeah, that's not true anymore. That's about six months out of date. Quantity. Sorry, did you know that was about six months you're out just, of date? You're, just you're talking through me, you're Brenda. Brenda, you seem to be talking through me. Did you realize that that's not the definition of a mole anymore? Go ahead. Ask it again. Did you know that that is no longer the definition of a mole or not? A, a mole is Don't the number it. of fundamental units, the same number as there are oh in exactly God, 12 Brenda, grams yes. of carbon-12. Wrong. Is that is no not question? the current definition. I'm asking if you were unaware of that. And it seems the answer is yes. The person coming here to assert that I don't know what mole is doesn't know what mole is. Brenda, that's not the correct terminology for the current description of a mole. It changed very recently. It seems you are unaware of this, Brenda. The person coming yeah, here to tell me that I don't know what mole is yeah. and the person who is yet to define what mass is. That's fine. Uh, go ahead and correct me and tell me what the correct definition of a mole is, please. Hmm. Avogadro's number of elementary entities. Right. And how many? So Avogadro's number is 6.022 or 10 to the 23rd atoms, right? That's Avogadro's number. Atoms, not atoms. I said elementary entities. Yeah, atom. No. Not atoms. Uh, elementary entities. Not yeah. atoms. Yeah, I know. That's the same thing. No, yeah, you know. Not. Then Are why you did you just say atom again? Dumbo, uh, <laughs> it seems pretty clear that you don't know what mole is. You said it was yeah, you said it was in relation to carbon C twelve. Now we seem to be segueing away from that old description of mole, don't we? So is it not that thing that you asserted earlier? They're the same thing. No, they're not. The definitions recently changed from what you gave to what you're now discussing with John. Now, do I know this description off the top of my head? I'll confess my ignorance. No, I don't. I don't know how many molecules of C12 it would be compared to, and I don't know how to detail the current description of mole. What I do know is it's the amount of stuff in something, something that's often described as being mass. So moral is not mass. Equally, it's not inertia. But you came in asserting that I don't know what either of these things are. You then described what inertia was, what a mole was incorrectly, and you didn't tell us what mass is. Uh, 
Um, yeah, you you still don't know what you're talking about. Uh Sorry, is this the last hurrah globe head defense of you just wow. don't understand? It would seem so. Uh, is that is that the end of your argument and an adequate demonstration that you do not know what mol is? Um, how many how many atoms? Why are you asking me something? You've come here to claim I don't understand something. Then you've had your ass handed to you, and you're still yet to describe and define what mass is. Um, how many atoms are? In Why are you asking me something? What is mass? Uh, resistance to acceleration. That's inertia. Jeez. Um, sure. Yes, they're related. That's they're not related. That's called an equivocation. Do you understand what an equivocation is? No, they're just different words. Do you understand words. what an equivocation is? S silence from the person coming here to tell me I don't understand things. I'll take that as a no. I have no slightest clue what an equivocation is. The very thing I'm doing by saying something is the same as something else that has the same description and explanation and definition. This is called an equivocation. It is not inertia because inertia is inertia, Brenda. What's mass? Inertia isn't a thing. Oh, what? So why has it got a definition? not a thing what are you talking about you've just defined it for us did you throw it down the inertia memory is, hole brenda doesn't exist anymore inertia now. is not a thing both not a thing why has it got a definition then you stupid bonehead mass is a thing Ma a mass is a thing inertia isn't even though you've given me a definition of inertia and not one for mass is that the official definition mass is a thing great thanks yeah, mass is a substance. It's a substance. What substance is it? So when do you want? So when do you want to debate? Nick? We are debating. <laughs> We're handing you your own ass. <laughs> wow, Shout Brenda, out! You you are off the chain. <laughs> Shout out to Uni Della. Is that right? I probably said that incorrectly. Brenda Einhorn Finkel, not very smart. BTW <laughs> Einhorn. Why don't you just yeah. stick with your yeah. shoe? So when do you want to debate, Nick? We are debating. This is your also crap <laughs> end hurrah. When you've had your ass handed to you, you ask us when we'd like to debate you. You came here claiming I didn't understand what mole was. Now, coincidentally, someone else had a massive long tirade at me about what mole was yesterday in the Flat Earth Uncut and After Show chat. So there's obviously some relation to this. I don't know what it is. I'm sure yeah, I'll find out eventually. But it seems you've come here now, you're talking through me, to tell me I don't know what mol is. Now, the reason we talk about mol here is because it's often equivocated with mass. Um, no, nobody does that. Except What's mass? For, except for... Um... What's mass? 10 pounds gives a guaranteed bet that she will either give me the definition of inertia or give me the incorrect old outdated definition of mole when I ask her what mass is. So I'll try again. Let's see how she gets on. What's mass? The quantitative measure of... A half a sentence. The quantitative measure of... Like pulling teeth. Clear enough when she's not got a crap point I answered to make. You. Now she's talking through me, of course. Clear as crystal when she needs to rumpus, loses all control of her mic when she's actually got to summarise her own point that we've just debated about. What's it's mass? Because you have your... Oh, now it's going to move on to ad homs. An inconcise, cut off definition of mass, then on to the ad homs. Try to concisely summarize what mass is, Brenda. 20th time I've asked. Uh, yes, it's a quantitative measure of inertia. That's what mass is. That's inertia. Quantitative measure of inertia would be inertia. Inertia is a property. It's not a substance. Sorry, I'm not asking so about inertia, 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 inertia,
Why are you suddenly segueing into what inertia is? I don't want you to define inertia. I want you to define mass. She said, mass she is said defined inertia was in terms before. of inertia. Two people spoke at once. Brenda, Brenda is inertia a thing? Because before, like two minutes ago, you said it wasn't a thing. So now, is it a thing? What's going on? It's not. Inertia is not a thing. <laughs> why are you, oh, you keep defining it then? <laughs> wow. So it won't be a thing it's, it's, until it's a subset of mass, then it will be a thing because it's a subset derivative of mass, right? So then it'll be a thing. So if you had this set up properly so that we could actually talk instead of you having speaker priority, that would be better. Or invite me in. Oh, would it now? Oh, would it? Oh, that's such a shame that you don't get to make your crap points through me. You wouldn't be so frustrated. You wouldn't be so frustrated. Frustrated with people talking through me without me being able to control them on my own show. What, you think that you should have control of the show, do you, Brenda? So, so Nathan... So that didn't get an answer. With that, I'll say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you tuned in live on the Nathan Oakley 1980 programming stream for smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to stay tuned if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! So do you think it'd be more reasonable if you ran my show then, Brenda? Oh, they're all being moved to the after show. Do you think it'd be more reasonable if you ran my show then, Brenda? No answer again. Shock horror. You don't have priority speaker. I am this show. It's my show. I don't have priority. Yeah, I do. I absolutely have priority. It's my show. Yeah, I would like to debate you somewhere where we can be equal. And oh, really? I'd like you to give me a million pounds. Those are my terms. Give me a million pounds and I'll debate you wherever you like. Now you give me your terms. I can't hear half of what you're saying, Nathan, because Try not you talking. have it set up here. Try not talking when I'm talking. There's nothing wrong with the setup. Uh, that's not true. In the Discord, we can't hear half of your sentences. That's not true. No, it is absolutely true. I proved it twice when Chris claimed this utter horse crap about three days ago. I got one of my moderators, Righteous Force, to go in and open his mic in both Hangouts, demonstrating admirably there was next to no delay and crystal clear sound. It seems that when you want it to be all cut up and delayed, it will be. But when I'm talking on Arwin's talking, you'll be clear as crystal talking through him. Right? There's nothing wrong Either with my way, audio. It has been tested. Yet while I'm clarifying there's nothing wrong with my audio, we can hear Brenda talking through me, can't we? No audio issues when I'm talking. Uh, a bully boy, settle down. A bully boy? So um, what, Brenda, you want to interrupt we... to give me ad homs? I will do as I choose on my show. Having debated you here because you have free access to my show to come in and challenge anything I say, that's not good enough. You not only want to be able to come in and challenge what I say with your utter horse crap incorrect definitions of mol, you also want to be able to go somewhere where you can control the audio and talk through my every demolition of your crap claim. No. I give you the opportunity to come here and challenge me if you want to. Do I want to go and debate you? No, I couldn't give a crap about you, Brenda. You have absolutely no sway, weight, or any negotiating tokens with me whatsoever. So what is it that I should do to come and appease you? Oh, I don't want to, Brenda. I have no desire at all to appease your desires. Do you understand? But, but flat earth is... But, but I don't <laughs> care what you want. If you want to debate me, you can, as you are. I have absolutely no desire to debate you and couldn't care less if you were here or not. The fact that you desire me is irrelevant. You keep your desires for me, Brenda. You're not alone. 
<laughs> you're, you're just a bully boy. I'm not bullying you. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can sod off unless your desire is to talk to me, as it clearly is. I don't care about your desires, your desires being for me to go and debate you somewhere else. I don't care. But your desires have led you here, haven't they, Brenda? To moan at me and call me a bully. Yeah? Well, you can keep your desires because your desires are in my direction and not the other way round. Uh, my desire is to debate you cares about or you. quantum <laughs> eraser. I'll debate quantum eraser also and I'll destroy... <laughs> He's here now. He's here right now. Like, like, like that kid Both destroyed you. you. And Nathan. Kind of like that I will kid destroy you. you in a debate. We are in a debate. <laughs> on a neutral platform, I will humiliate and embarrass you. Yeah, no. You're here now. No, what have you got? <laughs> you're here Somebody now. Ate their oh, today. <laughs> you're here now. On a what neutral have you platform, I can humiliate and embarrass Yeah, we've heard it three times. We keep With opening what? up the mic for you to actually deliver some demolishing point of ours. And you haven't. You're just saying, I'd demolish you somewhere else. You're here and can be heard. You're just not demolishing us. Well, that's because you are allowed to to bully me, Brenda. You're, Brenda, you're, you're, if you, if you're a bully you wanted boy to and debate, you why did you come here and have this whole thing about mass and mole and all of that? But now that you got destroyed on it, now you want to go somewhere else. I'm not understanding. Should have that should have been the first thing you, you didn't said. Destroy me. Yeah, you didn't define mass. You still yeah, haven't. But you didn't I'll define ask you again. Correctly. She's saying she's not been destroyed. Oh, define mass. Destroyed, like, by the way. Define mass. You're just you're just too deluded. Quantum to eraser. Understand it. Quantum, you're, you're a moron. You don't know anything about physics. You don't know anything about it. Define debate. Right? You just read from a script, and I would destroy you in a neutral debate. Destroy you. Destroy you. What's a neutral debate, Brenda? Exterminate. Uh, Exterminate. What's a, what's a neutral debate? A place where there is a moderator who is fair. So if I was to give you a minute apiece and tell everyone else to shut their mouths... I didn't interrupt. Would that be fair? Uh, no, because you control uh, volume and mute buttons. So no, no. Equal volume. I would. I won't mute you. In a I'll give you a minute debate, In a formal debate with a neutral moderator, I could easily destroy you, Nathan. Okay. You I'm and you just said eraser, quantum eraser and Arwen and chocolate. Yeah, we've heard it four times. That's the fourth repetition. That we heard it. You. That's I four never times. Used the mute button on you on Four my times show, I've heard it. Quantum Eraser is here right now, and it is um, within... I haven't finished talking about it. It's within my capabilities to give you both equal time without interruption. Not yes or no? that frigging clown. Man, why not? You're here. Brenda, you've been on my show two or three times now speaking live, and I don't have muting capabilities on you. I've never muted you, yet you haven't really destroyed anything. Um, that's so because far. I'm polite to you in your in your channel, Arwen. Right. right. So that's you're not being muted. and you and you Jeez. have you have boot, muted and booted me when you got it. All, all upset this time we've been I talking about it, you could have just had your little physics. debate. No worries. No worries. When I describe what, what I'm do, basic Brenda, physics to you, Brenda, you get upset and you kick me. Brenda, I don't need to hear the ad homs. What I'm going to do, Brenda, is I'm going to go back into the live stream room. You feel free to join me there if you want to. And everyone else will be on mute. You'll get a minute apiece. I'll give you five minutes to decide whether or not you want this opportunity to debate QE. I'm not debating that fucking clown. No way. No, you're going on mute. <laughs> no, hopefully. No chance. no chance. I am not debating Elmer Fudd. Sorry. No, you don't have to. Just le leave it to Nathan. You can cry harder. You can cry harder, little boy. You don't know anything about physics, quantum. You know nothing about it. All you do is, is recite a script. So mass is a measure of a substance resistance to acceleration called inertia. So it's a measure of the inertial resistance of a substance. That's what mass is. A mole is a unit measure of the amount of uh, substance 
in in a particular you know in a particular like say uh, carbon, right? It's Avogadro's number of any particular fundamental unit, which is an atom, right? So if I have a mole of ammonia. Um, you know, 10 to the 23rd um, atoms, you know, of that substance. And it's, and it's not new. It's the same thing as it's always been. Okay, there's your full minute. So pretty much exactly the same claim. Go ahead, Kiwi. Feel free to respond. Or we'll have a minute of silence if you refuse. Claim? I yeah, don't know. No, it was very Arwen, elaborate painting Arwen, of please, improvised. Arwen, for the love of God. Oh, Either okay. there's going to be a minute of silence with QE absconding from responding to her claim about mass and inertia and mole, or there won't be. She just repeated the same thing that she said when she came in. She conflated mass with inertia, and she got the definition of the mole wrong. So what is there to debate? It's already over. She's a clown. She thinks DNA is made of amino acids and shoes are natural phenomena. I'm not debating retards. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah, I got the uh, definition of DNA incorrect. You're, you're right that I was made a mistake there. I correct my mistakes. You do. Sorry, he, he gave you a rebuttal in response to your... Uh, he mass. didn't rebut. He just denied... I was in the middle of talking, Brenda. So he gave a rebuttal. It was the same rebuttal I gave. It's an equivocation fallacy. You're going to address that? You've got a minute. Go ahead. Um, he didn't rebut. He simply uh, plugged his ears and said, nah -uh. A mole is defined as the number of atoms to be found in 12 grams of carbon-14, which happens to be Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. It's the same thing. Thirty seconds. Hmm? I, I simply rebutted his claim. The number of atoms... Uh, a, a mole is defined as Avogadro's number of basic units, which is an atom, within any sample, right? And as it turns out, within it, within 12 grams of carbon-12, there's an Avogadro's number of atoms. It's the same thing. Okay. It's exactly the same repetition of the exact same claim that's been rebutted. The prosecution rests. Anything you want to add? Uh, I, I just don't get it why she keeps on repeating the same thing when there's clearly errors in there. I just don't get it. Looks like this is the end. Measure of the inertia. Oh, so, so she was talking through that entire time so she said she wanted a neutral platform that was qe's minute she was talking through it of course why wouldn't she be she wants a neutral platform so she can talk through every single word that's being rebutted we're drawing up a conclusion brenda while you continue talking in someone else's minute i open the mic on your line and you're in the middle of a sentence for some reason not listening to the rebuttal it would seem what a shock this is what your version of a neutral platform was i was very neutral I kept things very even. That was not your time to talk, but you continued talking rather than listening to the rebuttal, didn't you, Brenda? That that's not. This isn't how a neutral. Don't tell me what this is or isn't. You were talking through someone else's rebuttal. Someone else was getting a minute to speak. You carried on talking. I made it clear what the rules were. You couldn't cope with the rules of a fair discussion. You had to keep talking. You weren't listening to his response. Go ahead and spurg out, bully boy. Yeah, now it's time to add hom the moderator. I gave you a minute apiece. I was very, very clear about what the rules would be. No one else would interrupt. I stopped Arwin from interrupting you very early on. Gave you a minute apiece. And in the final minute, where Quantum Eraser could have just left silence, you talked. You don't need 
a reasonable and fair platform, you need a platform where you can talk when someone else is getting their time to talk, as you just demonstrated. Now you're going to claim I'm bullying you simply for pointing out what you've done. No, you're controlling a I was just controlling who got a minute That's each. Me. That's all I was doing. Yeah, um, so Quantum Eraser failed to address my points. All he did was whinge about my, my making a mistake about DNA and, and him misunderstanding the philosophical... Something's gone wrong with Discord. Uh, yeah, where, where's, where's Quantum Array? Right here. <whistles> Huey, where are you, little boy? Come on. Come out. Come out, little boy. What I'm for? with your sister. What, what for? He's already taken a piece yeah, as your assertion. He has nothing to say. He has nothing to say. Included. You weren't listening. You were talking. I've just pointed that out to the audience and you. Maybe you weren't listening to me. While he was concluding, you were talking. That's why you think he, he hasn't made a point. Now you're going to start talking through me, aren't you, Brenda? While I point out again that you didn't hear his conclusion because you were talking. Not in your minute. No. Not in your minute. The fair minute. The minute it. that you got. Now you're talking through me again. You didn't stop talking in someone else's minute. You continued talking. Therefore, you did not hear uh, the I conclusion you're claiming didn't come. It did... You were just incapable of listening. QE hasn't said anything. Yeah, he did. You just didn't listen, you bonehead. You continued to talk. You have it set up so that you have... Uh, I gave you a minute apiece. During someone else's minute, you continued talking. I don't hear anything. Yeah, you do, you lying <laughs> cow. You hear perfectly clearly. We know Discord works well. Chris tried that crap the other day. Your only rebuttals is the you don't understand. Number one, most abused tactic by fundies who are losing their argument for a sphere earth. You don't understand. Or... Next refuge would be, I've got technical difficulties. I'm going through a tunnel. Because suddenly it's 1989 and everyone's got analog connections. <laughs> oh, what a cloud. So when... Hello? Are you there? Yeah, we, there's about two dozen people on a broadcast that's being recorded. So, what? What? why are you asking if anybody's here? You're in a room full of people. Because you're not, because you're not talking. We're concluding statements and then there's a long pause. John hasn't said anything. You've just repeated that <laughs> four times. He has, I'll say it again, you didn't hear the conclusion because during the minute that you should have been listening, you were talking. The very person bleating about how fairness is needed. I arranged for you to each to get a minute each to talk. You continued in someone else's minute and are now claiming he didn't say anything. No, no. You didn't listen. The third or fourth All time I've said that. Complain. All he did was complain about a mistake I made about DNA. No, then there was a further rebuttal, which you talked through. Go ahead. You don't need to give me permission. You need to acknowledge <laughs> what I've said. You didn't hear the conclusion because you continue to talk during an allotted time for someone else. So you didn't hear the conclusion. Now let's see if there's a long pause and zero acknowledgement of that statement that I've just made. 
You didn't say anything just now. <laughs> so how did you know to respond by telling me that I didn't say anything? An absolute... This is horseshit. Bye-bye, Brenda. That's the last straw, you stupid idiot. She needs to be institutionalized, man. Yeah, she needs... She's nuts. She's basically nuts. driving us nuts that's her purpose in being here because we had a reasonable conversation with that dude earlier so she's come in to just talk shit chew out the show with shit rather than watching a reasonable dude normal normie non-fundy guy come in and go what the hell man wouldn't the gas just fill the space now wasn't that beautiful hearing a normie ask that question made my day just had to be ruined by Brenda to distract away from these lovely moments we have with normies who do come when there's prolonged periods of non-fundies not rumpusing the crap out of every point. But Brenda had to come here to tell me I didn't understand mol and then give us an old definition of mol. Oh, the irony. <laughs> yeah. Clown show. Is that is that gentleman still here? Probably not. No. Nope. Well, that was fun. Well, he's probably going to look into flat earth now. You want to boot everyone back to the after show? Oh, did you yes. move them? I, I just moved Brenda so that everyone else would be on mute so she didn't get a uh, server rumpus by her own side. Righteous, you got that? Did, can you move them? Yes. All right. Thank you, Righteous. So yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? That guy at the beginning of the show. Yeah, yeah, that was outstanding. Hope Talking he comes back. Funny, funny that though, right? We didn't have any distortion microphone problems with that guy, right? But as soon as Brenda came on, all the problems in the world, right? After her, her little nonsense got destroyed. While it was getting destroyed, she didn't have no problems hearing though. It's adorable. <laughs> Going through a tunnel. Well, I don't know. Like whatever. It, 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 I think the main game. They're back. They're back. That was fast. Oh, whoa! Who won? Unbelievably shoddy. <laughs> so, there you guys. I have a question. If inertia is not a thing, can I think of it as a thing? Or <laughs> that was a weird coincidence. Talking about going up to the thousandth show and me saying, "Ah, oh, it might be an in-between bit where you have a one-on-one." -on -one. <laughs> of course, didn't necessarily expect you to play ball. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, don't expect me to play ball with uh, clowns. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was fun for you. It was painful. No, I appreciate that. It is painful. <sighs> hey, did we get... I, I forgot about the question. Remember I had a question last week? Yeah. I asked for any astronomer to provide a single viable scientific hypothesis in the entire history of astronomy have we got have we got any feedback on that yet no. what about the picture of pluto not scientific <laughs> not a hypothesis no there's been no reaction to that at all there isn't any it's it's pseudoscience So is inertia on the really is level? I don't think Brenda's here anymore. No, I just yeah, that it. was funny. She tried to define it, then two minutes later it was like, oh inertia's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right.
I think Brent is not a thing anymore. I think that's the biggest train wreck of her up to date. Did you want yeah, to add? She was in poor, poor form today. Did you want to add? <laughs> did you want to add something, Bev? Is it Bev? Try thinking. Uh, yeah. Hey, Bev. Um. Hey, That's my boy Bev. What's um, up, Bev? The the way I I've been studying people and and things at the minute, and um, my argument with them is very very simple, and it was very very simple from the point that uh. Fight the Flat Earth called me a child abuser because all he knew was the fact that I taught my son that level is on the horizontal plane. So I, I can't establish anything else other than that at the minute because I'm just pointing the, uh, making the point that certain people are willing to call us really bad names for no reason so level being horizontal is my argument and uh they don't like it, it yeah, they want it, to it be triggers curved. them they want it because to be curved, the, there right? is literally no way they can get around this correct so simple yeah so simple I think it's projection, the over-the-top reaction calling you teaching a fundamental basic principle of geometry to a child as child abuse is because they have to teach double speak and rhetoric and religion to their cult children. And because of which, us pointing out that they're teaching cult rhetoric to their children means they have to project that back onto us. Quick. Tell them they're abusing their children. What's that? They're offering them scientific empiricism? Teaching them the scientific method? Child abuse! <laughs> they should be teaching think, them fundy globehead rhetoric. What's wrong with them? I think the fact that it's that... Because they... I don't know really whether you've noticed, but they always try and obfuscate the argument to make it complicated. So, like, people like my missus... Would, would hear that and get turned off and go, oh, God, I can't stand that. Oh, I'm not listening to that. But the level argument is, is it doesn't involve gravity. It doesn't involve numbers. It doesn't involve anything but simple things that everyone can understand. And in the end, they have to, a concept in their head has to come around that they have to bend a straight line. There's, that's the only way they can get around it, the, the level argument. Level is a tool for de establishing a horizontal line or plane. Bev, Bev, tell, yeah? tell, them, uh, tell them how, instead of uh, actually debating how level was supposed to be curved, tell them how all he was saying the entire time was non-Euclidean geometry. Non -Euclidean I wouldn't, geometry. Like, you can go, you can go <laughs> deep as anything, but I mean, like his basic argument, fight the flat earth argument about getting around it was that he need, they need a straight line to bend. Otherwise um, they can't wrap level around a ball. It, the horizontal line level is water level. That's a tool for establishing a horizontal line. And then guess what? Sea level. Right, so they need that level to bend. It has to. It's one of them arguments. So he, he's come up with a concept that in, in non-Euclidean geometry, straight lines bend. But he, he still hasn't got the, the, the fact that in non-Euclidean geometry, straight lines are still straight. It's the space that bends. So they, they, they can't get around it. Do you want to know a nice question you can ask him in that regard? Ask him what the name of the geometry he's referring to is. Do you, do you know the it's name? Non-Euclidean. That's, that's the beauty of it. No, no, no. He, no, he, he no, defines no, 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 no. it as hold something on, hold on, hold on. that it's stop, stop, stop. not. That's not what I mean. So he's saying oh, right. non-Euclidean, so not Euclidean. So what yes, is that, that's so, it. That's it, yeah. He doesn't uh, know anything else other than that. Sure. But what is it? What's the name yeah, of it? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. So, uh, he he won't define it. I'm telling is, you, you never you never talked about right. right but that, I'm I'm just I'm leading you to say wow. it. So, what is the definition of that geometry? Yeah, it's not the geometry that 
he's talking about. You know, it, it's just literally non -ge non Euclidean geometry is the geom. Everybody knows Euclidean geometry. That's the geometry that everybody knows. I know. I'm asking right. you so, what what geometry he's using. What's the non Euclidean? Non no, no, that's, that? that's his question. That's how he gets around it. That's how he ends me arguing with him, is by oh, saying that oh, I don't know non-Euclidean non geometry. Yeah, so he's taking it to a conceptual medium, but that doesn't... It's just taking things fictional. What's just, the point? My question's got lost in that. So, so I said sorry, a question on. to ask him would be, what is the name of the geometry he's applying? With his fourth you, dimension that's being yeah, bent, what's that called? Yeah, I have. But what? then he just says you don't know what non-Euclidean geometry is. So, you know, like you can't get anywhere with these people. They they, they have no argument other than to try and me confuse the people that are listening. You want you want to There's finish only up a coherent that point there, argument. I'm, I'm never going to get to it. I don't second, think uh, he's, he's missing my point over and over, and he keeps telling me the same. I'm, I'm trying to lead you to a point that you keep walking past, my friend. So I'm saying to him, a good question would be, what is the geometry? And you keep telling me about what it isn't, which is what he's doing. So you're almost obfuscating my point, like he did yours. My question what is, what do you mean? That's all I needed. Thank you. I mean, no, Nathan. He's saying that the flat, fight the flat Earth is saying that fight the flat Earth is using the the Euclidean method. Oh God, please! And that, no. and that the other guy means. doesn't understand it. That's what he's saying. I know. That, please let Nathan speak. So the question that I would have asked him is: Okay, if it's non-Euclidean, what is the geometry? And the geometry what he is. Yeah. What well, is the non-Euclidean geometry is his question, for God's sake. Right, now, it's not that I'm asking yes. you to answer. You may not know the answer. That's fine. But as so long as there's a gap left, I can then tell you <laughs> so that you know how to get him next time, which is to say, oh, right, so non-Euclidean geometry. So the geometry you are using is, and the words you want to hear past his lips are, starting with pseudo Ramonian four space length breadth depth and time which he will be bending now yeah that's what that's what you'd expect yeah I'm I know, the, I'm, I'm I know mate that. mate but like mate, I say hello I have hello you. hello I, I'm trying to make a point to you I, I know you're keen but I'd love to just make my point go on right what was the first part of that geometry that I just named the pseudo Ramonian. Right. Pseudo, what does that mean? I don't know. Not real. Not real geometry. He can bend things. Well, in the real, we can't. Flat's flat. That's your point. We got there in the end. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, we got another argument in in Discordia. So Blender Chicken. Are you there? I see you in here. And I just shared my screen, Nathan. Can we take a look at this? Can you share my screen, please? Hello? Are you out there? I'm here. You're sharing, I think. Yes, I am. I can hear you. Nathan. You're sharing, John. Where'd Nathan go? I don't know. Toilet. You're sharing. <laughs> All right. Blender Chicken. He wrote this in Discord. Is this shelf flat at the and level or level? So this is old Red's Pretenderic little clown show, right? And we had Kosho. Is Kosho in here? Let me see. Oh, Kosho's in. So, Blender Chicken or Kosho, right? We got this photo. Let me pull it up. All right. We're going to open the original. Shuffle please. It, shuffle it. Okay. Please. We want to know your argument. Blender Chicken or Kosho? 
come off moot right now. They're too scared. We want the argument to this belly laughing train wreck from the Black Lagoon. Kosho, blenderized chicken. I'm off moot right now. If you don't come off moot, either one of you, I'm going to kick you out of here. Yeah, Ten I seconds. think that needs to be a new rule. Ten if seconds. The baller cowards ain't, if, if the baller cowards ain't going to fucking say anything until, you know, after the show has ended. Five seconds. Terminate them. Thank you very much. What I missed all that because of a. You... I missed all Say that. Again? Of, I missed all that because of a toddler screaming. <laughs> what, what just happened? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, they brought up Red's Pretenderix argument in the live chat, so I'm holding their feet to the fire. Blender chicken. Bye bye now. Kosho. Where'd you go? Ah, you little stinker. You left, didn't you? Suffering success. Okay, carry on. Well, to Blender Chicken's defense, he never really talks. He's always just listening and talking in text. Too bad for him. Hey Nathan, did hey Nathan, did you miss that argument? They they pulled up uh Red's Pretenderix tilted shelf <laughs> talking about flat or level. Freaking clown show. You got these idiots parroting in that nonsense. Anybody, I'll tell you what, let's bring it up to anyone in Discordia, any baltard. Uh can you argue Red's Pretenderix tilted shelf? Hello, essays. I'm telling you, they're they're not going to do anything until after the show ends. That way, they don't get humiliated in front of many other people. Why would it be it's humiliating? What they Surely they believe the globe is real. Why would it be humiliating to defend something that, that they believe is real? Uh, yeah, and surely we're a bunch of idiot retard flat earthers who have no arguments. So why would they be on mute? Should, every time they unmute, they should just take us apart. But apparently, they don't want to. What's going on here? Maybe because we're on the really is level. Yeah, no one wants to argue on the really is level. They want to really argue on the really isn't level. <laughs> With that, I'll say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!